Greetings, I'm Barrent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice by Triton Noir. There's going to be three boxes here. This is what's called the Assassin's Pledge. So you're going to see the main box with all the stretch goals. We have this cool looking tower and an extra miniature as well. We're going to unbox all this and see what's in it. This game is by Triton Noir, and it's also, of course, based on a Ubisoft game called Assassin's Creed. If you don't know, there's been many different games made already in this genre or in this theme of Assassin's Creed. It's really cool. I've played many of them and I've had a lot of fun playing those. I'm hoping this board game can mimic or at least give you a feel for how that game plays. With that, let's go ahead and start the unboxing. If you're excited to see what's in all of these boxes, then I need you to meet me at the table. Before we unbox this, I did open that one small little miniatures box, and this is all that was in it. It's an alternate pose for Ezio. He looks amazing. He's from the video game. He's one of the main cast members from one of them. Well, there's 12 different video games, so there's a lot of different people. Uh, so this is one of the characters that potentially might be in this game. It's an alternate skull form. It looks absolutely awesome, and if this is any indication as to how the rest of these miniatures are gonna look, it's going to be sweet. Let's take a look at what's inside this box. I'm going to grab the top and take it off, and this box is absolutely monstrous just to tell you it's a huge box we have a, some of our player boards right on the top we have a compass rose right here it's going to be able to tell us north south east and west we have i believe this is going to be maybe an enemy board or something these are going to be our player boards there are four of them this is a one to four player game this is a fully cooperative game you are going to play as the assassins and you're going to attempt to complete all the different chapters in the storybook that is part of the game the campaign book is right here it's pretty big it's a big thick campaign book filled with lots of different campaign things that we're going to be going through i'm super excited to dig into this game and see how it all plays of course we have a rule book we'll have to read that first it's i believe about 32 pages or so maybe 33 let's see what it looks like looks like it's uh i don't even see any numbers on the pages it looks like Am I blind that I don't see the page numbers? Well, I'm gonna, it's, it's the decent size rule book here, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look through all that. We do have some stickers. There is some, not necessarily legacy style elements, but there are, there are places in the back that you're going to be placing stickers that are going to show you how you've done in the game or how your character is going to progress throughout the game. Next, we have a punch board that's full of all the different tokens we're going to need. These are going to be our rule point. This is going to be different types of reminders to re of during the game. These are caltrips. These are just triangle tokens. We have here, these are going to be enemy entrance tokens. So you're going to place those down on the map. Depending on where the enemies are told to come in from, they're going to come in based on those things there. Next, we have objective tokens. We also have chest tokens, and I believe these are going to be our special objectives here. We have all different kinds of tokens, and they're double-sided, but they are the same on both sides, except for this one. These are the alert tokens, and they're going to be from green, and it's going to be then alerted, and then you, the monsters, are not the monsters, sorry, the enemies are going to start coming after you. We do have all of our different boards here. There's a whole bunch of them. I'm going to take this foam piece off, and oh my gosh, look at all those miniatures. I already see them. There's a whole ton of them. We're going to take a look at some of these and see what these are all about. These are going to make up our map. There's a total of 39 of these smaller ones. There's going to be six of these medium type tiles, and there's going to be two large tiles in here. Now, I'm not sure if the large tiles are going to be in this box or this particular one. That looks like a large tile there. This looks like a large tile here, so it does look like the two of them are here, so it is. They're pretty large. Here's another one. These Maybe these are our medium ones. There's a lot of large ones. Hmm. Maybe I got the mediums and smalls mixed up. But these are all the different tiles we're replacing down when we decide to make it. Now, of course, the campaign book will tell you exactly how to set your map up as you go through it. And then you're going to move around on that map based on your objectives. And here we have a giant box of miniatures. Absolutely huge amounts of them. Wow, there is a ton here to paint. Oh my goodness. I believe these are going to be some of our main people up here. They could be not only the heroes, but some of the enemies as well. These are going to be more, here's some crossbow men right here that are holding the crossbow. Too bad that guy didn't load it. He probably should have that loaded. I don't know why it's not loaded. <laughs> he should have a loaded crossbow. Now with all these miniatures that need to be painted, there's even a bear. Wow, check this out. There's even a bear right here. With all these miniatures that need to be painted, it's going to take me a while to get this to the table because i got to get all these miniatures painted. Now there is an option. Uh, in the comments below, I want you to tell me 
I'm interested in getting a playthrough of this done and I really want to get it out to the table fast. If you're not worried about it being painted, I can get that playthrough out faster. But if you want these to look really cool on the table, I would have no problem trying to paint this up, but that means the playthrough will come a little bit later. Please tell me in the comments below what you're interested in and I'll make that happen the best I can. We have some chests up here. These look really cool. They look very similar to what you see in the video game itself. Those look really nicely done. These are our different rings. Now, of course, you're going to put these on at first. This is where your players are going to be, but then if you're ever alerted or they find you, you're going to put this red ring on, I believe, and that'll then notify you that you have been found and that you have to do something to try to get yourself hidden again. You have to become incognito. These are going to be where we're placing our objective markers on these little things here. These are full clear plastic, but the token will sit right there, and you have, then your character fits into one of these, and that's how you're probably going to be completing your objectives. But there are so many miniatures, and there's so many different kinds of miniatures. Look at this guy. It looks like he's carrying, what is that, like a flail or something? And they are very detailed miniatures as well. we got a guy carrying a hawk right here. This guy looks cool. This guy could be uh, Leonardo da Vinci. He actually appears in some of the games. So it could, who knows, maybe da Vinci might be in this game. That'd be pretty awesome. We have some of the assassins up here. Here's one of them right here. He's got his blade right there. And don't, it's not his hidden, oh, here's the one with the hidden blade. He's got his hidden blade sitting right there. In case you don't know the game, they actually have this hidden blade that's tucked up underneath their thing, and they actually cut off one of their fingers in order for this blade to be able to slice, come out and slice people. It's pretty cool. That's how you kind of get indoctrinated into this Assassin's Creed guild. And they're kind of trying to take on the Templars or thwart some of their plans for domination. That's kind of how the game is based in the video. We'll see how it works inside the actual board game itself. We'll move this tray full of, look at all of these miniatures. That's out of control. <laughs> so good and well look at this they kindly enough gave me a way to be able to put the ball back if i can't figure it out which is a big help i really enjoy the fact that some people that the games are now doing this we have even more miniatures down here oh my goodness look at this oh wow look at these guys there's guys on horses okay these are more crossbowmen and look these crossbowmen actually loaded their crossbows these guys are amazing they are ready to go they loaded their crossbow up and they're all set to fire as opposed to the other guys that had no clue which if you have a bunch of assassins running around you might want to have a loaded crossbow. Look at these guys on horses. These guys look really cool. Oh, the barding on those horses look really well done too. And you can paint them all different colors if you wanted to. That'd be really so you can signify like groups of two or you can paint them all the same if you want to. We have a boat down here. In some of the games you're on a boat that you can move around. Actually in black sails you're actually pi commanding a pirate ship. We have, these are going to be I believe up on top of the buildings where you can hide inside. These is going to help you become incognito. And these right here, these are, are ways of getting in and out of the actual mission. These are, I forget what they're called, but they're this is basically the way you can save your game and get in and out of the game. So we'll take this one out of here. Oh, they're actually fast travel points. That's what it is, they're fast travel points. They're in, and in the game, you have a big giant map you're able to move around. You can travel between them with these points. After you unlock them, you can just travel there. Makes things a lot easier. So we have on the bottom here, this is probably gonna be a lot of, well, even more miniatures. We got, <laughs> This is all of our paper components that we're going to be needing to look at. This is a huge box. Can you see how deep this box just keeps going? Here's all the envelopes for this game. And of course, they say, stop, don't read them. When we will not be reading them unless we're told to. That's how this game is. This game is a hidden game. So as you do different missions, it'll have you open up certain envelopes and you'll gain the components that are inside. Or you might not. It might tell you not to read them and they're used for the next mission that you're about to embark on. Also inside this is if you do not, or if you're not able to complete a mission, you can do it again. And if you don't do it, then you still get to go on. So there's te technically a type of fail forward progression, but you're going to miss out on some of the treasures and bonuses for actually completing a, a miniature a mission. Wow, here's a giant lion with wings statue. That looks amazing. Then we have a tank of some kind, I think, or something. If I remember right, this might be a tank. Let's see if I can even get it out of here without breaking it. Well, it's not going to break. It's a giant piece of plastic. Oh, it's even got the wheels. Oh, the wheels don't move, though. But that's pretty cool. We have a neat little tank. Now, these are all the different boxes. I'm not sure what I can actually open and what I can't. An HQ box? I don't think there's anything in this. This must be where you put things when you're ready to move on. Here's some of the dice you're going to need. So these are the ones we're going to roll. These are the ones they're going to roll. So see if they can get the symbol. They've spotted you, and it's going to make your life a lot harder. This is, they've definitely alerted you, or if you're already alerted, they see you. These are going to be what you roll, and based on what you, your weapons, you can maybe get a hit. You can get the bonus trigger of your weapon, or this is going to be the enemy actually deflected your blow and maybe even counterattacked you. Those are how the dice work. 
These are all secret boxes I'm not supposed to open. And I don't like to open things unless I have to. But underneath them, there are some things. There's, these are going to be some of the cubes we're going to use. These are going to track your health on your character. These are going to track your action points that you can use. We have even more dice down here. I don't even know what these dice do, but we'll find out as we play through it. Then again, we have more. I think all oh, these are cards. Some of the cards. And we have bags. That's fantastic. Well, let's see what's underneath this one. Maybe I'll find some more neat stuff. Nope, nothing under there. I'm guessing there's nothing underneath three and four here. Because these are five. There might be something under four. Because four is a smaller, is a bigger box here. There might be something they've stuck underneath here. Let's see if I... Nope, that's it. So that's all the stuff I have really that I can open. Because all the rest of this is hidden information. So that's all we have for the main box. We have a lot of miniatures and some paper components. Sadly, I can't open because this is this is a hidden game. And I don't want to explore... I don't want to explore make anything known to everybody. So I'm sorry I can't do that for you. But I am excited to do a playthrough of you of it, and then you'll find out what all this stuff is. That will be the plan. I want to try to get this playthrough out as fast as I can. Of course, please leave in the comments below if you're interested in seeing the minis painted while we go ahead and go into this playthrough, or if you want me to just dive right in right now and not worry about it being gray plastic miniatures on the board. Though I, <laughs> it kind of pains me to do it. But I would do whatever you guys think is the best plan. So that's the base box. Let's go ahead and just take a look at that tower. So in that giant box is this tower. And it just sits out on the board, but that's not all. It's also got a top. Look at this thing. And on top of that, it's got even more stuff. These I've actually put on there. They're actually pieces you have to attach. The three parts you see up on top of here. Just go right in there, and I'll have to glue them on or something at some point. But then this thing connects like this. Look at how tall this thing is. This thing is out of control. I'm going to move the box. That thing is awesome. You really can't see it because I have the camera in the wrong, kind of more perpendicular than I normally do. But that is a really, really cool piece of terrain that I could probably use in other games as well. It looks so neat. Oh, and look, it even has some of these, check that out, it even has some breaks and cracks in here where the assassins use, use to climb up this thing in the game. You're climbing all these different things. And then even when you get to the top of these tall towers, you're able to synchronize and you gain more of the map. So that might be part of the game as well, as so you can synchronize yourself to different parts of the game and be able to explore more areas that you normally wouldn't be able to if you can get to the top of these towers and synchronize. That'd be awesome. And, and then on top of it, when you do actually complete certain parts, you go into this animus and you come out and you wake up in the present. So we'll see if any of that has to play into this. It'd be really cool because this game kind of goes back and forth from the present to the past and you kind of are diving into one of your ancestors is kind of how the game is portrayed it's in the most of the different games so here is the giant tower that was part of that oh my gosh this thing is awesome i mean look at according to my arm when you look at me here's my arm so i mean for crying out loud this thing is like as big as my hand my arm almost this thing is awesome all right that's it that's really all i have for this for assassin's creed brotherhood of venice i'm excited to get to this playthrough of course please tell me in the comments below how you want me to do this do you want to see a bunch of painted miniatures and get this game looking really cool or do you want me to get it on the board as fast as I can because I can do either one whichever you feel is the most important to you this game is looking really cool I'm really excited to dig into this game and see what is in store for us thank you so much for watching I hope you did enjoy this unboxing if you did don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell so we'll see you know when the playthrough for this comes out also like I said please feel free to leave anything in the comments below I would love to hear from everyone are you excited for this game did you know anything about this game and are you do you play the video game much and know much a lot of the different lore that's really associated with this game and um, how much are you hoping is actually in this game based on the video game again thank you so much for watching and if you're excited to see this game or any other games on my channel that are coming soon then i need you to meet me at the table